it was like a dream since I was a child. In Spain, we have the idea, the romantic idea, I think, of Australia with the surfers, with the sunny days. I want to know the koalas <laughs> and the kangaroos. I, I thought the kangaroo was in the street and everywhere, but no. <laughs> I say, no, first I need to study, then I need work in my career, and I need blah, 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 blah. And OK, all done, and say, what is the end? Come to Australia. <laughs> I think I fall in love with Australia before I arrived. It was my dream. I just want to learn English and I was thinking, oh, it's better if I change the country and have the experience to live in another place. So yeah, it was my dream and now it's a reality. When I decided to come to Australia a few years ago and I found out that Australia was one of the happiest countries in the world, so I thought that's fantastic. Uh, that's the kind of country that everybody would like to to live. But when I arrived here, something that surprised me is, is one of the countries with uh, more mental health problems and young people committing suicide as well. That made me think a lot about what is happening in such a happy country. I came to Australia with a luggage full of dreams. Now, my first experiences in Australia were not what I was expected. I was actually uh, being exploded, underpaid, and at work, uh, and totally isolated from uh, the broader community. My classmates, all of them were inter other international students, and it took me around three years to actually make relationships with locals, with Australians. Depression is actually a huge thing in societies right now, not only for international students, but also for like general, like general public. But especially for the international students, when they're living overseas, apart from their family, they're, it's very hard for them to get enough support, like, like the mental support, emotional support from other people. Being working for the last 25 years of my life in personal development in different countries and helping a lot of people, I decided to do some research and investigate about what's going, what's going on here. And, and I found out that uh, there is an, a lack of uh, personal development and emotional intelligence. So that's why I decided to, to create this uh, charity. Yeah, Host to Grow is a uh, non-for-profit and charitable organization uh, deeply passionate about uh, education for life, holistic health, and well-being. So basically, we exist to challenge the status quo of education by using different and innovative ways to empower people in need to provide an lasting social change. So that's basically how we started all this adventure. Honestly, I think it's a great idea. It's, it's very, very nice to have someone there, like your Aussie family here, that help you when you are, are living like difficult moments. So it's very, very nice to have uh, people like that. I would really appreciate to have the same when I arrived here three years ago. So I think it's a really great idea that people need to be grateful because of that. I used to have a really good job in my country and then came here and you are not no one but uh, work in something that you you never imagine. In the beginning it was like okay Laura you need to eat you need to speak English so this one is the first challenge for me. One experience that was too hard in the first day that was the chef and he's from Australia and he says something I couldn't understand at all. Something like, your English is really nice, or really good, I was like, oh. When I start to look in my first job, I remember I couldn't say anything, so one person called me and I didn't understand what, what they say to me. I remember I said, oh sorry, could you send a message please? I'm in class, so they give me the direction, and I will arrive to, uh, in the place, on the place but I was really lost and they say, oh, sorry, we need someone who understands a little bit more than you. And I say, yeah, it's okay. <laughs>
sometimes doesn't matter how much or how bad or how good do you speak. It's more how do you feel talking or how do you feel uh, expressing yourself in another language. And at the beginning, it's not easy. You feel embarrassed. You feel like you don't know how to do it. You feel like, I don't know, you are talking with a potato inside your mouth. And <laughs> do you know what I mean? Jesus! <laughs> Just breathe louder. Just breathe. I was like, okay, Laura, you push yourself to learn English. <laughs> you are not going anywhere. So, but after a while, we are so friends. Like, we are very, very close friends. And it's, it's just um, many situations that um, you need to understand or you need to keep the best thing. And of course, I feel so bad. I feel sad. I feel so tired because I stand up all day in this kind of job. It's really hard. When you chain everything, like us, I think it's, it's a really big challenge because you don't have any contacts, everything is new. Uh, also, uh, the way that you live, you change your, your apartment, your flat, your family, your friends, and you start to find everything. And I think it's uh, fear, the face the fears for me is the, my big my big challenge. But then it's like, come on, I have, I have done something different. I am speaking in a different language. I am trying to do my best. I have traveled 24 hours from my country to get to another country. It's fair to have mistakes. It's fair not to understand something. It's fair. So yeah, I think it's hard, but then it's hard how you treat yourself. So relax, take it easy. So after that, I continue trying and someone give me the opportunity. Obviously, I start with a job different because I start with a cleaning job. I never work in this kind of jobs in my country. I haven't uh, doing these uh, things. So I learn because I, I always think, oh, it's easy to dust in the the table but no when I start to do that I realize that it's, it's hard you feel tired you have to do many things you you need to do very fast so yeah start with a job here is difficult too this year was uh, intense because I start the years uh, with the no I have I had a um, classmate and flatmate uh, she was from Colombia. She go from holiday in December, and she never come back because she dead in in Colombia. <laughs> this year I start like this. She called me in December, and in January the her sister uh, sent me a message and say me, you was the last person who my sister talk a call. She go to the hospital. He, she has cancer. But she, she didn't know about that. This, this year I started like this. Uh, it's like a limit, the life in the dead. <laughs> and then I was cleaning when I closed the shop and I said, Laura, you're losing all your skills, your, what you're doing here. So this is that, like all the thoughts that come in when you are tired especially. And then um, it's like, what are you doing here? Yeah, or what for? Okay, you are pushing yourself, you are doing many things, you are learning, but after that, what is coming? And this is the point that right now I am. I can write, I can uh, read, but after that, what I'm doing here? Yeah, what is my purpose in my life? Uh, when I speak with my friends, it's like, okay, what we are doing here, everyone has a really good job uh, back home. So are you coming back? Are you gonna stay? What are you planning? So it's, it's really hard. When you arrive, you start your studies and then you have to look for the job. And then your English at the beginning is not easy, but then you are so nervous when you get your first interview, but your teachers help you to do the interview. It's very excited at the beginning. And I think if you keep yourself like in balance, trying to do your best, trying to just to get as much as um, interviews as you can and so on, you will get a 
your first job and then you will have the job and then you are studying and then you have no life. <laughs> In the middle of those things you have just to sleep <laughs> because you have no energy. <laughs> this is the beginning, then it will be easy, easier your life, but the beginning is a bit hard because of that. I think international students have very unique experience. I think that um, the campaigns that deal with mental health in Australia, and they're fantastic, and beyond, organisations like Beyond Blue have, um, and Are You OK have, have done exceptionally well in providing broad community support without the stigma that that support used to, used to associate with. But in my experience, international students have a very unique experience. They're, they're very susceptible to pressures that not only exist in their education context, but in the context of coming to another country and setting up, trying to balance work and study, and obviously feeling the anxiety of being away from home. Added to that is this, is this idea of border closures and, and, a, and a global pandemic that could affect their home country when they come back. I, I think the challenges are huge, and offering tailored support to those groups particularly to those international students that are, that are suffering this, is very important. It's obvious that you're going to miss people. It's obvious that sometimes it's just, you feel that things always go wrong. If you give them that, that part of, hey, I'm here, it always makes that stress and that depression easier to go through, knowing that you have somebody there that is already telling you, hey, this can happen. That's important too. Probably my worst experience in living in Australia, I think could be the beginning of the coronavirus uh, problem uh, because we were away from our family, we were away from, from our countries. My, my, my boyfriend is from Colombia and from Spain, so we couldn't go home, we couldn't stay close to, to our families. We were talking to them mostly every hour at the beginning, of course, uh, we were very close and we were afraid. We were afraid of everything. We were afraid of our jobs. We were afraid of our, our time here. So I think I was crying almost every day during, I, I think it was March. We both lose our jobs. Um, so I think this was the worst. But then you realize that it was the worst for everybody. This year for me is a little bit hard when I when I start the coronavirus because I was thinking, oh my God, if I don't have the opportunity to find a job, who cares about me if I stay alone? No, now I, I have my boyfriend, I know that he helped me, but you feel, oh no, it's, it's, it's difficult, maybe it's better if I go back to my country. So I start to to have um, to have the negative thoughts. And yeah, it's it's this bad. <laughs> it's one part of many challenges, I think. And I think the challenge for us as an organization and also us as Australia as a society is how these people who are also, who are very important to our economy are treated in their experience both inside and outside of their classroom. During COVID-19, those experiences exacerbated. And yet, so, some support uh, is there for the community, but the community is not connected. And I believe this is why we need to work together uh, for the common good. The, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, situation has affected a lot to the international student uh, community and the situation has made them to lose their jobs so they are really suffering a lot so uh, growing health international student is for sure on a right program in the right moment and before was because they feel um, you know depressed because they are they have homesick or these kind of things but now it's an extra you know thing because they don't have money because all of the uh, for the, the covid affect everyone and every company here uh, the restaurants cafes where they're working so they don't have money so they call very anxious, anxious to say that i don't have money i don't have job so i think now is a little bit um, 
hard for them. So yes, they, I have a lot of call from students to, to explain these kind of situations. So I know now, now it's harder than before. Yeah, of course, we are very in, uh, in touch with them, very close. They, they used to come to the office or, they, or to call us whenever they need. It's true that now, because of the COVID, they are not coming very often as they used to do before, but they always call us when they need. We have WhatsApp or whatever. We are very open to, to them when they need help. Look, international, international students and the experience of being an international student always comes with this feeling of being a part. You're, you're introducing yourself into a new country and, and even before the pandemic, it was, it was an experience that's challenging because there's, uh, there's a new country to be part of, there's possibly new languages to learn and, um, and it always comes with this experience and it is part of the experience. What the pandemic has caused, in our view, is, um, is something a lot more concerning, which is um, additional financial challenges, also the emotional stress of being in a, in a pandemic situation away from home. So, um, so it's concerning given that obviously Australia's borders have been uh, very stringent and obviously for good reason, um, but those people that are most vulnerable in this experience, particularly within our education system, uh, in our view, are international students. Well, look, obviously it's a challenging time, I mean, for anyone living through the pandemic, but particularly for international students who are living so far away from their families. But fortunately, here in New South Wales, the economy is starting to open up and, you know, jobs are reappearing and life's becoming a little bit easier. For students, many of international students here in Australia are employed or were employed in those sectors that were very affected by COVID, so hospitality and tourism in particular. So they were among the first people to lose their jobs, so it was a very challenging time because they didn't have access to some of the other support services uh, that other people across the country had access to. So this is something that is affecting daily to students' lives and I think that they are, it's affecting a lot because they, they want to go back home, they don't feel comfortable here and they prefer to go back with their families and that's why they, they leave the country. There are countries like Argentina that their borders were not open so they couldn't even go back home so you have to be more focused on them, trying to help them to, to stay here and to give the maximum support we can. If you're arriving to a new country where you don't have a language, the language, and there is no mechanisms to connect with other people or locals. In the midst of a crisis when you need help, you would ask only to people in your own cycle. What happened is that in your own cycle, it's people that is in the same situation as you. And there is no many mechanisms to actually connect with people that can provide support. I have met many Australians that have never met an international student. And we catch the same public transport and we live in the same city. During COVID-19, I was able to see part of an Australia that wanted to support. And they wanted to help international students, but they didn't know how. On the other hand, I saw and I hear and I met many international students that only heard the words of Scott Morrison saying, you are welcome to go home. They didn't know uh, that there were other people that could provide support. And so many didn't seek for other type of support. It's very important to understand that the education market, including international students, of course, is the third largest industry in Australia at the moment, in our country. So we are talking about uh, an, a huge um, impact in our economic. But we have to understand as well that um, this group is very vulnerable because being far away from their families, they have to work, they have to pay their visa, they have to pay the rent, they have to study, so they have a lot of economic and, and culture uh, pressure. No? The contribution that international students make to New South Wales is significant. So from an economic perspective, in 2019 it was worth $13 billion and it supported over 95,000 jobs. But really the benefit to the state goes far beyond that uh, in terms of the people links that we establish through having over 250,000 students here every day, most of whom will go home and become leaders in their country in government or in business 
Uh, you just can't put a value on the benefits to our state for those students studying here alongside our own students who will do business with those people, uh, who will do all those people from, you know, from a government perspective into the future. Um, it, it creates enormous goodwill for our state. So it's, it's incredibly valuable, not only in the short term, but particularly in, in the long term. Absolutely. I think the economy of Australia is, um, uh, particularly in education, is dependent on international students. Our research funding, the, the success of our universities all the way down to our schools uh, has been very significantly affected and very positively affected by the presence of international students onshore. How we manage that going forward is going to be a big challenge, I think, because there's less money going around in the system. I think there's going to be less students able to afford to come here. And also, practically speaking, some of the work that those students were doing when they were here will probably be taken up by Australians now. Many international students uh, come here for the long term. If they want to extend their visas, many were in fear that if they were accessing support, uh, those visas were going to be rejected in the future. Uh, so we saw international students that didn't want to provide uh, any of their data. Uh, and this is related as well to the cultural backgrounds. International students are coming from everywhere, particularly developing countries. And we saw, depending on the demographics, certain beliefs in accessing support and help. Uh, for others, uh, accessing support, particularly for charity, was, uh, was hard. Uh, many international students had never had that experience and in many cultures accessing charity support has a negative connotation. That means that most of them are at risk of uh, develop uh, mental health uh, illness. So basically depression, anxiety are some of the most common uh, mental health problems that these uh, international students are suffering or experience. So I think organizations like House to Grow uh, pay a very, play a very important role in the international student experience. It also gives confidence to the local, to the local providers of education uh, because it, it allows them to interact and link their pastoral care with those students in a way that the student networks often don't. And I think there's a very important place for them to play um, in, the, in the current education market and it will probably be more important going forward. So the program has uh, three parts. The first one is about um, group coaching sessions. So actually that's very interesting because they can share in a safe space that we call the lab with other students in the same situation. So they can express their feelings, uh, share their concern, and, and talk about freedom no, in, this, in this space. So we talk about motivation, resilience, uh, setting goals, um, well-being, um, how to create a uh, positive attitude. And basically, they are building their emotional intelligence. And then we have another part, which is uh, an online emotional intelligence training that the students can complete in their own time uh, at home from a, any kind of device. And then uh, the third part is on a, is on a weekly um, fitness sessions. So the program is uh, very holistic uh, and we cover all these areas. So that's how we help them. Of course, they, they, they are able to have an, a well -being, an a personal well-being plan as well. And we give to them as well resources and support where they can find um, help in mental health uh, after the program if they need it. Everything happens for a reason and how to grow come in the perfect moment in my life. I need the light to be clear what I'm gonna do, yes? Because sometimes you can't, you need to speak and speak louder and speak out what is happening inside to you. And in this moment, we're like, okay, Laura, my friend told me, Laura, if this is how to grow up, this is coaching, do you want to go to this course? I was like, yes, I need it, please.
I, I know I am not alone here. <laughs> I, many other people like me in the same situation, in the same moment, um, and say, okay, I'm not alone. Uh, I learn about the everything, everyone, and the pillar as well. <laughs> I was lucky because I was scrolling my Facebook and I saw a post that one agency, a student agency, put something about how to drop. And I said, oh, can I, can I apply? So I read and I said, oh, maybe. So I filled the gaps and I sent and they contact to me and say, if you want, we are ready. So I say, oh, thanks God, universe, everyone. I'm so happy. I was surprised. I never thought that I can find some help for international students in this way because always I think, oh, students, we don't have enough uh, help here. So you work a lot, you give money because you pay a lot money for international students, it's very expensive. You work and they don't pay really well. So I say, it's real that I have something for me more for Hispano-American people because I saw in, a, in another uh, charities programs not for develop or for emotional things, not for students. So I was really surprised when I saw this. The second day that I uh, went or, or met uh, Pilar, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't at all sleep. Why? I don't know, because then your mind is just flying or thinking, oh, I like my life. I really enjoy my life, my life. But if I do this, if I change that, if could I make something different? Could I? So then it's like suddenly a new world is just in front of you to do whatever you want. They opened my mind because I was really close with my negative thoughts. So they say, why do you feel that? Or why do you think you, you can do it? many things? Look, many things that you did before. So why do you feel uh, uncomfortable? Or you, why you don't believe in yourself? So I say, oh, yes. The reason because the program has been so successful so far uh, with more than 150 students at the moment enrolled in the program is because um, there is an uh, holistic uh, program so we are covering the mental, emotional and physical area as well it's very innovative. We are using high motivational uh, techniques so that's something really new that Yes, how to grow is using at the moment. It's an it's an a blending program, so we have an a, an online part and a face to face part. So that's very attractive as well, because interna international students um, has limited time to participate in this kind of, of programs. As well, is because we deliver the program in their mother language. When we are talking about feelings about emotions, especially for international students and um, people. English is not their first language. So that's a very important for them to be able to express and communicate what they really are feeling. So doing the same thing in English never will be the same and the impact for them wouldn't be the same. I definitely think that the fact that you can express yourself in your mother tongue, in your language, is way more helpful. Yeah, definitely doing this course in Spanish, as at least the feedback that they, the students have given me is that, wow, I didn't know how to express myself, I didn't know how to interact or how to use some words. Uh, that when you're happy it's just easy or you don't really care but when you're bad and you really can't the frustration grows they want to talk because i think if they are afraid to speak english they don't know maybe they don't talk or they don't receive the help that they need in this moment it's crucial when you want to talk about your feelings it's really hard to talk about your feelings and your emotions in another language that is no 
your mother tongue. Now, the work that uh, Pilar is doing in, in the whole organization is crucial because it's not only mental health, but it's also coaching. And we have an, um, a great amount of international students that are so talented that they just need to believe in, them, in themselves. And more than that, they need the opportunities, the spaces where they can grow uh, and put into practice or their talents and, and capabilities and capacities. So I think it's totally important, uh, again, not only for international students, but for the young generations in Australia. I, I, I know that the student uh, present this kind of feeling because actually in my position I feel that when I was when I just arrived Australia so I can understand what is what they they feel because we you, sometimes you feel alone sometimes you feel homesick you feel depressed because you are up far away from your home I notice when they speak Spanish because I'm from Colombia and speak Spanish they feel like sometimes they they call me for another reason and they start to talking to me about how they're feeling. So, uh, yes, yeah, so basically I have some students that they feel like alone, homesick. Um, talking in Spanish in the, in the class with Pilar, to be honest, at the beginning was a bit strange uh, because I just talk Spanish with my boyfriend at home. And I really try to keep the English and I really try to improve my English and so on. So at the beginning it was like, I don't know if it's helpful for that, but then, and Pilar is from Spain, I'm from Spain, so hear her telling like very typical Spanish phrases, I don't know, reminds me even my family or my grandma, very fresh for me, very, very close, uh, and of course you can express yourself properly, not for the others, because the others will understand you as you are speaking in English, but for yourself. I consider that it's really important for also like international students like speak even like Japanese, Korean, yeah, Italian, to this um, help to say, okay, we are here with you. The way I'd um, reflect on the course, on the nature of the course, is that your, the ability to bring students together, often from different backgrounds, and have them share their experiences is very powerful. Because no, no, two, no two education providers are the same. And I think that's very important. Because ultimately, the, 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 reg, the highly regulated education environment in Australia often means that that different providers of education, whether it's in the higher education space or the vocational education space, which attract international students, even if they're offering the same course, have a very different cohort of students with a very different program. And being able to link experiences in the context of, uh, well, uh, of a well-being course has a very powerful impact, not only on the people that are doing it, but on those people that end up speaking to that person afterwards. And I think that's very important. We cannot get back to normal after COVID-19 because the normal for international students were not working for many years. So this is an issue that it has lasted more than 30 years. And we cannot allow that in a multicultural country like Australia, international students or people on temporary visas have to go through experiences depending on the color of their passport including work exploitation, landlord abuse, even regulations in the education providers and agencies, how the international students are arriving to Australia. And I think while we're having the borders closed, it's an incredible opportunity to start some change. And the change start with the stories of international students, to listening to one another instead of uh, assuming that international students um, need certain things, I think the next step is listening to each other, uh, bringing paths of inclusion um, and building and organize the community of international students. 
something that needs to happen next is also the inclusion of international students in the policy that actually affects them uh, and impact them. Uh, we've seen people that are working for international students that probably have never met, in fact, an international student before. Services, uh, we, we saw the civil society uh, stepping up to support international students uh, in the midst of the crisis, but many people in those organizations have never met an international student, and this needs to change. Uh, if we want to support international students in this country, we actually need to create relationships uh, with people in the civil society and in the broader community. We hear of cases of international students trying to get access to support, but a spreadsheet or a complicated website is not going to change. Uh, the support that an international student can get access to. A relationship, a story, is going to actually help an international student to feel supported to get access to help. The help that many people want to provide, but it's not about just giving the information and that's it. It's about creating relationships. Take this experience of being in Australia to broader your own perspective of the world, to meet people that are very different to you, to don't be afraid of talking to people that sound and look different to you, and to bring your own self, your true self to this country because this country needs you. And your accent and the color of your skin is actually your value. And that will be my advice like take your skin and your accent very seriously. Everyone, every human being needs uh, mental health, access to mental health support. There is this misconception that you only need in mental health support if you are in a precarious situation. Uh, I think there is some work to be done in that space, a country that prides itself to be safe and to be multicultural and we really need to get into the conversation. We really need to listen to international students and the voice, amplify the voice of international students in this country. When we started uh, thinking about to create this program, for us, the most important thing was to answer the question, how we can do it better and different? And that's what we feel that we did. At the end, it's, it's, it's great. At the end, is just believe in the people who is telling you positive things. The most important is believe in myself. 90% of the international students report that the program helped them to achieve their goal. So that makes us feel really happy um, and the, the, the thought that comes to my mind is, we did it.